Hello, hello everybody. I'm going to put this note in the chat. And we're going to get started with Camilla when she joins. There she is. Just waiting on Camilla. Hi. Hello. It's so good to see you, Camilla. We haven't spoken one on one really before. Yeah. It's How are you doing? good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm a little sleepy. Um, <laughs> are, where are you based? Uh, I'm in uh, San Diego, California. Okay, great. Well, um, the topic today is all ages are welcome, the power of youth stories. Um, I want to first introduce myself. My name is Serena Nongia, and I am the uh, um, a program and communications assistant at the Confucius Institute U.S. Center. Um, and the purpose of these talks is to just discuss some of our honoree's stories, share a little bit about the benefits of being an honoree, and um, encourage people to enter the essay contest, which I've linked um, in the pinned comment, but also it's on our website and in the um, in the, our bio on Instagram. Um, so I wanted to let you introduce yourself, Camilla, a little bit and tell us kind of how old you are and um, your experience with languages and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Camilla Carter. I am a 2018 People to People honoree. I have a very diverse background. Um, both my parents are deaf and my mom is from Mexico and my dad uh, grew up here in San Diego. Um, I, growing up, I spoke English, Spanish, and American Sign Language, and then in kindergarten, I started learning Chinese. Um, I am now a freshman at El Capitan High School, where I have bit start or continued learning Chinese, so I've been learning Chinese for almost 10 years now. That's super impressive. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you about this because... Talking to young people, I myself, I'm only 22, so I myself am I'm very uh, enthusiastic about youth voices and youth stories, and yours is especially unique for many reasons. Um, since we're here to discuss your story, and part of that included how young you were when you started learning languages, um, I was going to read a segment of your essay from 2018. Is that all right? Yeah. Cool. So, this is how it goes. Quote, my hot pink Barbie laptop would talk to me in French, Spanish, and English. I always thought that was so interesting, and I loved it. That was when I knew I wanted to learn more languages. My family was looking for a school that would teach me a new language. My parents found out about Riverview Elementary School in Lakeside, California, that offered a Chinese immersion program. We took a tour there. When I heard them speaking Mandarin Chinese, I was really impressed. My parents soon enrolled me in this school. And on the first day of kindergarten, I was nervous about going to a new school and learning a new language. That's a really impressive start uh, in kindergarten, learning Mandarin Chinese. Can you speak a little bit about how starting at a young age impacted your language learning journey? Yeah. Um, well, as you mentioned, I started learning Chinese in kindergarten, which is very different from some of the honor other honorees. Um, and I think that it allowed me to see and be exposed to a new perspective and a new culture. And then I was also able to take that and just, you know, apply it to the rest, to the rest of my life and to my everyday life. Um, you know, still to this day, I'm learning Chinese and I am able to still learn so much about a new culture and connect with people that are across the world. And um, I just think that learning Chinese is, or just learning any language is very important because it allows us just to understand and get a better perspective of the world that's around us. And 
Um, it is personally, I think learning Chinese has been so much more than just being in a classroom with a teacher and students. I've also, you know, been able to travel to China and experience the culture and meet the different people and be able to talk to those people. And I personally think that that's a very um, different and unique experience that I've been able to have. And being at such a young age, you know, I'm still growing and I'm still learning new things. Like in kindergarten, I was still learning how to read in English and how to write, but I was also learning Chinese. And I think that was very different. Um, but it was like, I was kind of able to, like, I grew up with Chinese, you know, in that sort of way. So, yeah. That's amazing. I know I speak for, for a lot of people when I say how impressive that is and how lucky you are that your parents enrolled you in that program. Um, many of us wish we would have been enrolled in, in some high, uh, some difficult language in, uh, in kindergarten. Um, and I also wanted to bring it back to like the the language that you were using. It specifically in this paragraph, um, I where you're talking about your hot pink Barbie laptop, and then you're talking about your experiences fr through your lens as a young person, um, especially as a kindergartner. I I love um, that part, and I think that I wanted to emphasize that because. When you are, when people are telling their stories in their essays, if they use detail and tell it from as genuine and um, honest of a of a place, and it will just become extraordinary and and really bring us into their world, you know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, you know, I was looking back and I was thinking, like, when did I write? How old was I when I wrote that um, essay? Because I would tell it um, completely different now than I would back then. Um, mm -hmm. Not in the sense that, you know, the story would change, but just the way I would say it, it would be different as if I were to answer a question before than now, you know, my perspective changed and I'm constantly learning more every day. Um, I think like, I, I still love reading that essay because in 2018 I was in sixth grade so that was, you know, for me, sixth grade was a really long time ago. Um, and I was also a lot younger than all the other, all the other honorees. Um, you know, everyone was, you know, has been done with, you know, college and, you know, has a job and a family. And um, I think reading that essay, it was just very raw and it was just, this is who I am, this is my story, and there's nothing, you know, covering it up. Um, mm. It was just very, very raw and, you know, like you said, genuine. Um, and I still remember to this day that specific hot pink RV laptop that I would use. And um, my dad had always loved languages, and he shared that with me and my brother. And... Um, I'm very grateful to be able to learn Chinese and um, be able to have all these very unique experiences. That's wonderful. I love how you mentioned that um, you added the word raw to to this discussion because our stories are, are raw, but especially when we are young, um, we just tell it as it is, like you said. And I think that's something that's unique and really amazing about youth stories. Um, so if you're a young person who's watching this, if, you, if you're a parent or someone who's connected to a young person who is learning Mandarin Chinese or is learning Chinese culture, um, definitely send this over to, to your, uh, your children or, um, and, and have them just share their story in the most honest way that they can. I mean, um, did did your parents edit your essay at all, Camilla? Um, my grandma, me, but my grandma was a teacher, so she, you know, knew how to help little kids, you know, express mm -hmm. themselves, which I think was helpful. Like I remember, I would like tell her, and she would just write like what I would say. That's kind of how right. I started my essay. It was just me just talking, and she would ask me, questions, and I would just answer the questions and 
that's just how my essay became what it was. That's wonderful. Yeah, I think I think it's something that educators are learning how to do um, is allow students to express themselves in in the ways that they want to. Um, and I know you also mentioned that you spent some time in China um, with the uh, CIUS alumni trip. Um, in that was in two thousand eighteen as well, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of people from different age groups on that trip. How did you, what was your experience connecting with, within the honorary community with people of different ages? Well, um, on that trip, it was a two week trip. And um, I remember being so excited to go on the trip. I had previously that year, I had gone to China um, for a month by myself abroad. And it was my first time to China. And I remember being, you know, very scared to go out of the country and, you know, be by myself. Um, and then being able to go on the trip later in 2008 or in that December um, with the group, I just, you know, th the age gap, it kind of just disappeared in a sense. Um, and I was just able to share the experience, you know, going to the Great Wall going to the Forbidden City, all these things that I had been learning in my textbooks, I was experiencing in person, but I was experiencing it with this community and this group of wonderful people that, you know, understood how excited I was because they had been learning it too. And I was also able to talk to many of them, you know, and just see um, many different opportunities and paths for my future, um, you know, seeing and being able to compare like, wow, that's something I could be in, in a way I look up to them. That's what my future could look like. And um, we were able to, and one thing I learned was like, learning comes in so many different ways. Like mine was strong teacher and students, but many others um, learn Chinese, you know, later in life. And they found the love for Chinese in different ways, like through music or books or movies, you know. And it's interesting to see the different ways and just kind of take a step back and, like, realize that, you know, everyone is different. But at the same time, we have so much to share and we are connected in so many ways, which I think is just incredible. Absolutely. I I agree. And that's something that um, Cheyenne and I were talking about last week is the that we all are different, but also share so, so many things. And that's something so powerful about um, our the alumni community is that, like you said, people are different ages, and, and they also come from different backgrounds, they have their different places in their career or college level. And but yet, they can still get along with and bond with a sixth grader um, yeah. who a, a very mature and talented sixth grader who is sharing her story as well, which is you, of course. Um, and, and that's something really phenomenal is that this program really brings is this cross generational uh, bonding and connection, which I feel that often young people are, placed into that they are just young and so they only talk within young people and what I mean I was just reflecting on this myself like three of my mentors are over 60 years old um yeah. and I learn the most from people who are much older because they've lived life longer yeah. um, so that's absolutely something that's really important as we as we share our youth stories is that older people are listening and that want that want to be involved is really nice <laughs> yeah. to be engaged um and i know i've told i told you this before we started talking today but i i find youth stories especially like yours incredibly powerful um and we already discussed kind of what makes them unique. Part of it is the raw voice and that sort of thing. But what is it about youth stories that you think maybe people benefit or learn from? Um, well, I think that um, they're 
the way we hold is different and we're able to like I'm all about like perspectives they're able to see in a different perspective you know an adult can write something differently and as I said um, I would write my story in a different way now than I would before um, but that's just because I'm older now but um, when I was younger you know being able to read that it was just you know, those little details that, you know, maybe an older person would just skip through. Like, I, who knows if I would have added that hot pink Barbie doll or laptop now than I would before. Um, and I just think the little details add up to great experiences and great stories. Um, and, you know, you always hear like little kids when they're younger, you know, they babble on about all these different stories and the little things and they're so focused on the little things and I think as we get older we kind of you know look over the little things um and I think that the little things end up adding up to just a great story and it kind of all holds together I agree like details yeah. that maybe right that maybe yeah, you wouldn't think of maybe you don't even remember a lot of the details because as you get older, you kind of forget some of the things that we've that you experienced when you're younger. So if you're writing when you're younger, you're able to remember those details and include them and create such a diverse and amazing story. Um, I think that's a wonderful point. And, and I'm also grateful to have written the um, essay back then because now I just have this essay that I can hold forever and back on and be like wow this is where I started and I'm able to compare and see how far I've come like when I wrote that essay I hadn't even been to China yet because um, I ended up going later that year and I went twice and then I was able to go to Malaysia and it was kind of just like the starting point like that essay was before everything else just unfolded and I was you know after that I just kept wanting to learn more and I went to China and then I um, was able to go to Washington DC and leave the people to people award and kind of like you know everything just fell into place and I'm really grateful to just you know one day in the future be able to go back and just read it and see this essay as a young sixth grader and be like wow I have come so far and to be able to just have kind of something that holds all my stories and I think I should probably keep writing so I don't forget all the little things yeah I I found I find writing not only um fun and a time for me to be thoughtful but also like kind of therapeutic in a way sometimes um but you're right it's just I it, reading back old stories that I've written or I write poetry so yeah it's the details that you definitely start forgetting as you get older um <laughs> you don't think you will but you do <laughs> and I'm only 22 and I still do not remember like fifth grade so <laughs> and I know I I'm going to ask you this question and then encourage people to apply for the essay contest but in your personal opinion would you recommend someone applying to the CIUS Center people to people essay competition yes I definitely would recommend them to anyone to apply no matter what age you are um, what point in your Chinese learning journey you're at, um, no matter who you are, I think everyone has a story to tell and um, anyone could benefit from this program and this community. Um, you know, being, you know, writing the essay, not only, as I mentioned, you'll have something to look back on and just to start, but also be able to become a part of a wonderful community where you're able to share stories and experiences as well as make new experiences. Um, some of my favorite memories have been on the 2018 trip to China. You know, 
I made so many wonderful memories and learned and made many great experiences that I'll definitely cherish and remember. And I should write them down so I don't forget the little things. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I just think it's such a wonderful program and all the honorees are just great people and have amazing stories to tell. Thank you so much for that recommendation. I see we have a question in the chat, but um, before I go into that, I just want to encourage anyone who's looking or thinking about applying for the essay contest to check out our website at www.ciuscenter.org backslash 2021 award. Um, and that link is also in our bio. Um, so Abby is asking, hi, hi, Abby. Um, what advice do you have for essay writers? I don't know if you have any thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, well, personally, how I wrote mine was, um, I would just maybe just think of questions that you would ask yourself or that someone would ask you and write the questions down. And then one by one, just start answering the questions. Um, and just, you know, start writing your essay from there. Um, or like, like for me, I was just, you know, telling my story. And like, since I learned from a young age, it was kind of just like telling my life because Chinese has been part of it for so long. Like I have been learning Chinese longer than I haven't. Um, so it was just kind of, you know, like this was my life up until now and it'll continue to grow. Um, so yeah, I just think, just be honest and write you know your experiences and um how it has benefited you and just ask yourself questions of like why this why that and your essay will quickly just become a great story i agree and to add on from from my perspective as um one of one of the people that will be reading and evaluating the essays we definitely look at we love really unique stories. So Camilla, part of your story that really stood out to us was obviously your connection to the deaf community. And um, you even performed, I believe, at the gala, right, in 2018. Yeah. Um, so that was just learning about something that maybe not a lot of people are connected to is is a great way to start um, what makes you unique but also like you said i i completely agree being genuine and honest um if you've gone through struggles and and you've grown from them you can mention those um anything that you feel best highlights your in the impact that language or culture has had on your life is is really a great way to um to start thanks abby yeah and i think just um anything that you know like connect chinese something in your life like i was able to connect chinese and just a language to um the deaf community and learning and knowing american sign language um being able to connect the two and just knowing that you know being able to communicate with other people is really important to me. So that was something I focused on was communication and Chinese allowed me to communicate with more people as um, learning or knowing American Sign Language allowed me to communicate with more people, so. Absolutely. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, Camilla, and I'm so happy to officially meet you um, <laughs> on face to face. Um, I hope someday soon we'll be able to meet face-to-face -face in person, maybe in D.C. or California. Um, but for now, I'm super excited for you. Is there anything you're looking forward to for the rest of the week or maybe um, going into sophomore year? Um, well, my school has this very unique um, program, uh, GLLP, Global Language Leadership Program, which I'm a part of. Um, and that's kind of where I learned Chinese. Um, so next year I'll be taking um, Chinese and Spanish at my school, and I'm super excited. And I'll be taking um, world history in Chinese, 
So I cannot wow. wait to see um, the challenges that next year will bring because I know that it will not be easy as we signed up for not particularly easy classes. Um, but I know that no matter what happens, um, I'll be learning and I cannot wait for next year. That's so exciting. And make sure if you ever need any help, reach out to us at the center and we can um, try to help you out <laughs> with getting you some resources. Uh, so definitely stay in touch. And I'm looking forward to chatting with you along the way in the next few months. And um, thanks so much for joining. Thank you so much for reaching out and having me. Um, it was so great to talk to you and to you face to face, as you said. <laughs> Absolutely. So I just want to once again remind people if they want to submit their essays, um, the deadline is May 21st. So you have some time. But um, if you also want to nominate any students, that deadline is April 27th. All of this information can be found on our website at www.ciuscenter.org backslash 2021 award. Um, thank you so much for joining us. and. I will talk to you guys next week. Alrighty. Bye, Camilla. Bye. Thank you.